Welcome to Celebrating Act Two, where John and I are going to have the pleasure once again of speaking to somebody who we've interviewed a short while ago uh, about a book, and we're going to do it about another book today, but it told, one was fiction and one is nonfiction. So, John, who are we going to see today? Our guest is Leonard Simchek, and mm. uh, we met him, I guess, almost a year ago, I'm not sure, um, and interviewed him about what was ostensibly children's books. A uh, retelling of the Christmas Carol tale with Tiny Tim and Bob Cratchit. Great books, a lot of fun, but something totally different from what he's used to doing, which is psychotherapy and adult books about adult problems. Mm -hmm. And so his, his current book is called Power Tools for Men. Couldn't be more timely. And before we bring Leonard on, I want to give you his, um, his bio. He's written a book with a, a, a friend and a uh, co-author, uh, collaborator, uh, Rick Bronick. Unfortunately, Rick can't be here today, but Leonard is, and he'll fill in for both of them. Um, so here's Rick's bio, and uh, not, pardon me, Leonard's bio. <laughs> Leonard can tell us about Rick, because I want to know about that, too. Uh, it says here, Leonard Simchek is a psychotherapist a life author, speaker, and award-winning best-selling author of seven books. For the past 40 years, he's worked in both Australia and America as an educator, a writer, and therapist. He was a director of a family therapy program in Sydney, Australia, and later worked with the Family Institute at Northwestern University in the U.S. With his wide range of clinical services with men, and that's the key here, He's been in the forefront mm -hmm. of men's healing. Leonard's TEDx talk on fatherhood. By the way, you've got to go look up his TEDx talk on fatherhood. It's called In the Age of Superheroes, Where Are the Fathers? Great. Yeah, we'll, put a, we'll, put, we'll put a link in the description below. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, let me continue. The TEDx talk has been viewed over 110,000 times. Not bad. He maintains a counseling and coaching practice in Orange County, California, and is the proud father of two adult children and four grandchildren. And along with his co-author, Rick Bronick, Leonard has written an important book. That's what we're talking about today, Power Tools for Men. So let's meet Leonard, if you haven't met him before, on our uh, past interviews with him. Leonard, great to see you again. Great to be with uh, you, John, and with you, Art. Uh, uh, as I always appreciate your informal approach to just interviewing and uh, it's always a lot of fun thank you um yeah. you know when we talked about the tiny tim book tiny tim bob cratchit uh, mm -hmm. we had not known much about you at that time and so the psychotherapy element to that story was fun and of course it's a fun book they're both fun <laughs> and they are family books i think but ostensibly children's books because it it's the takeoff on the children on um, the Christmas Carol. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, but this book is more in vain with what you usually do, which is book books about men. And, you know, today it couldn't be more timely. That's so true, um, John. The, you know, today there's so much discussion about toxic masculinity. And yes. Yes. You know, uh, and the assumption is that masculinity is toxic. Well, Rick and I, uh, we don't believe masculinity is toxic. It's a, bit, it's a bit like saying relationships are toxic. Yeah, there are toxic parts to relationship, but yeah. uh, like masculinity, masculinity is not toxic. And uh, Rick and I, so I've been, as you mentioned, been working with men for 35, 40 years. Rick has been working with men uh, around the world. He's a facilitator of men's groups. He's, he's worked with uh, over 200 groups in 11 countries, five continents, and is just an amazing man with a breadth of knowledge in, in working in groups with men. And so we collaborated together. We're in the same men's group. And so we collaborated together over the last six years to really identify, well, where are the problems that we men have? And can we put together a blueprint for healthy masculinity. And that's basically what our book is about. How can we, uh, as men, take a look at ourselves and say, what, what is healthy? What's, how can we strengthen the healthy aspects of ourselves? And that was the impetus for us writing the book together. 
Yeah, you I, know, I have, a, uh, I have a quick question for you, uh, uh, because I know it's not just an area that you've uh, uh, lightly studied. You've got a master's in social work. And in fact, uh, in uh, California, you're a licensed uh, clinical social worker, if I'm not mistaken, which is not something you need to have in order to do the kind of work and research you do, because you basically uh, uh, help uh, on an individual basis, uh, 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 principally men through uh, identity crisis and things like that, which this book goes into a lot. So uh, th this is uh, really interesting in that you're finding, you didn't just make up the book, in your practice you're finding men have a lot of problems today that are solvable, but they seem to be insolvable. And is this really what your book is all about? So true, Ar. So. Um, I mean, there's an increase. Men are in crisis these days. There's an increase of depression, anxiety, suicide. Um, Ninety-three percent of the individuals in prison are men. Ninety-eight percent of mass shooters are men. You know, th the addiction rate that uh, men are experiencing is, is is increasing, and you know, working with men in therapy has really, really helped me see inside to see what we men struggle with. And I always believe, so whenever I see a man in my room uh, coming for therapy, I assume he's been work, working on his problem. Let's say if he's depression. He's been working on his depression for a long time without telling anyone because part of our conditioning is we're independent, self-sufficient, keep our problems to, to ourselves, be more stoic. And so I always tell him, them, you know, as men, if I have a broken leg, my first choice is to get some duct tape and duct tape my leg together. And then only if it's not working, will I go see some help. That's kind of how we're geared. And, and, and so you know, in terms of you forgot the WD-40. <laughs> WD-40. So my joints aren't working. Let's use some WD-40. <laughs> get the joints working. And yeah. only if it's not working will I see a professional. That's that's kind of how our, you know, I was raised in the south side of Chicago. And I had a particular model of masculinity. I was taught to be tough, independent, self-sufficient. Don't talk of problems. Don't cry. Don't show your emotions. Just solve problems and be the king of the mountain. You know, that was yeah. my, yes, be, let's be the king of the mountain. That was my model of masculinity as I was growing up. And I realized there was some damage there because there was, there was a lot of areas that I didn't ask for help. I, didn't, I needed help, but I didn't ask for help. That sure. was... That was a, a problem area that I think many of us men have. Yeah. You know, I, I think men in general as a group have been ignored and overlooked for generations. I think of all the other groups, you know, it, there are trends. We tend, to, um, we tend to focus on women. We tend to focus on children or this group or that group. And unfortunately, these trends often often take a negative view. It's not just... We need to be lifted up, but you're terrible. And I think that's where the toxic masculinity comes from. I think, I think it's also uh, that men are always told to tough it out. Okay. Yes. And, 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 and so I think this is not only is your book timely because men are in crisis, but I think there's a lot of society that has been blaming men. And of course, you're right. The, the typical real male role model is. I don't know who, John Wayne, you know, few words, tough guy, big, strong, that kind of thing. So this is this is wonderful. And I wondered if I'm right that it hasn't really been addressed a whole lot. You know, you, you are right, uh, John. It, it's becoming more evident. I think there's a lot of books written about men now, uh, whereas it, you, next time you go to a bookstore, go to and ask them, where are the books on women's issues? <clears throat> You'll see reams and reams of shelves. Then you ask them, where's the book? Where's the shelf on men's issues? You won't see a book. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> yeah. And so there's a lot written about feminism, about women's issues. What Right now, there's kind of a resurgence of men's issues because of the whole concept of toxic masculinity that's been promoted in the media. And unfortunately, it does uh, create this... Um, negativity about masculinity so when people think of masculinity they're having this negative view yeah, uh, yeah. versus wow masculinity that is so great this guy's so masculine 
But yeah. masculinity needs to be redefined. It needs to be redefined so masculinity also includes other aspects of ourselves, like connection and love and emotional con- uh, relationships. You know, that, that, we, that we, we, we can ask for help because we do need to ask for help if we're, we're having some trouble. Right, right. I, you know what I love about your book, Leonard, and why I think everybody should read it? It's positive. It's, it's tools. You give, us, you give us not only stories, but you give us tools to work with, us meaning men. But I, I really think women should read this book, too, because they need to understand men, just like men need to understand women, you know. Uh, but I love the positivity of the book. You've given us tools. You've, you're pointing us in a direction that's good for us. By the way, it is important that people read the book. It's just there's too much to discuss here. But uh, you, uh, I think, uh, what I took out of it is you sort of come up with like a like the title says a blueprint and this word classics. Uh, maybe can you give us a brief overview of what they can expect to find when they uh, go chapter by chapter through the book? Sure. So Rick and I came up with this acronym classics. And each of those eight letters um, stands for an element of of men expansion. So the C stands for connection. So we're connecting to our emotions. So our emotions are really great. So even if I'm feeling fear or sadness, that's teaching me about myself. Uh, And so getting that's connection. Then the the L is for love. Obviously, love is an integral part of our lives and, and passion and what we do and in relationships. There's authenticity. How can, as men, we really be authentic and be true to ourselves? Uh, then there's spirituality. That So we're coming from the inside. We're connected to uh, a higher part of ourselves, our higher wisdom, a higher power that, that can help us give, help us in, in this world. And then the S, another S is for sexuality. What is healthy sexuality for men? You know, this is this is something that often isn't addressed. What is our healthy sex? What does healthy sexuality look like? And then there's intention. Um, how can we be intentional in the world? How can we create a mission to be of service to the world? Um, so that's C L A S S I C stands for community. Men, we need to be in community. In the olden times. Uh, they would have councils of men, the Knights of the Round Table. Men are so isolated today. It, it blows my mind when I see men and they come in. I says, well, how many friends do you have? Oh, I have a couple of friends. I say, how how often do you talk to them? Oh, we talk frequently, once every three months. And, uh, you know, it's, it's like uh, a community. As men, we need community. And then the last uh, letter, S, is for sovereignty. So sovereignty doesn't mean I'm lording myself over. It means I'm the king of my life. We are meant to be the king of our lives, of our castle, and of all the facets that we own. So, you know, I want men to be really kings of their lives. Hmm. Great. A, a great, uh, what, what do you call it, acronym? Acronym, acronym yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah a, a great acronym. And uh, more important than the acronym is the tools themselves, the way you approach each tool with a little story, with a little explanation. Um, you've done a great job with the book. and. Art and I want to enlist you and Rick to do what? a series of specials for, for Celebrating Act Two. One special, one video on each of your eight tools. Can you do that for us? Oh, we would love to do that. I know Rick and I, uh, we've been talking a lot about these tools. And I think, you know, when us men, we like tools. You know, the thing I, I always know is that we, I like to fix things. I love tools. I love going to hardware stores, you know, and I think men, we love doing that. And so yeah, sure, what, what, kind of, what, what kind of tools? And so we try to chunk down each of these these um, qualities into a tool that we can fully understand. And the other thing that Rick and I do is that we uh, we really reveal a lot about ourselves. A friend of ours was reading the book and he says, Leonard, I'm, I'm so surprised that you and Rick are so open and vulnerable. And I says, well, if we can't be open and vulnerable, vulnerable, what it really means to be a man and Mm -hmm. share that with others, well, then that's going to help other men be more open and share that with other people, particularly in working with other men. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is no question. This is a a timely uh, book. Uh, I think that uh, uh, 
you may have uh, had in the back of your mind that this will become a classic in <laughs> the world of men's health. And uh, uh, so you, you chose the right acronym. And it's a, a fascinating book. I admit I haven't read the whole thing through uh, because I don't have any problems. Okay. Because uh, <laughs> the word diet was not in there. So I need I needed the the uh, a classics D, but we'll, we'll talk about it at another time. But anyway, we look forward to uh, you and uh, Rick uh, putting together this uh, seminar for us, which we discussed a bit uh, today, and uh, uh, putting it on a series. We have another series, by the way, uh, just because we like to toot our own horn on uh, uh, medical coverage, and, and so this will be for men's health. Uh, that uh, a series dedicated to that, and we really look forward to it. Yeah. Now, before we go, let's tell people how to get your book. It's still relatively new. Uh, you've gotten some recognition, uh, some awards, I understand. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, when the book was published, it uh, became number uh, one on the uh, uh, new release bestsellers for gender studies and number two new releases for men's health. So we've we've been very blessed to uh, that somehow it's resonated with the with the community, the audience, and they can always get the book from Amazon um, or any bookstore. You know, you can order through a bookstore or just through Amazon. Now, do you have a website where you guys are uh, promoting the book? Yes. Yeah, so you, they can go to. Uh, powertoolsformen.org. It's an org, so powertoolsformen.org. I, I think when we did Power Tools for Men, um, it was actually someone having a Power Tool site, but so it's powertoolsformen.org. Great. Great. Well, this is, I, I highly recommend the book, not just for men, uh, even though that's who you wrote it for. I think every woman over the age of uh, maybe 14 should read this book. Well, you know, it's it's, it's funny, uh, John, that um, uh, women have often told us, they says, I want to get your book because I want to give your book to my son, my brother, yes. my husband, my father. It's like uh, the response from women has been pretty uh, phenomenal. Yeah. Well, I can see why. I can see why. So we'll no, look what? forward to you and Rick getting together with us again and maybe doing this series of uh, classic videos one video for uh, every uh, every power tool in the book. That, that really sounds like it'd be very useful. We'd love to do that. And just thank you, Art and John, for opening up this this vehicle for to get the message out into the world. Because really, oh. men oh. as men as we know, we really need to uh, open ourselves up, and we, we need to change. I mean, I, I've been changing, and uh, really um, think of it this way: at one time. Men, we worked in the field. We needed to have really strong muscles. Now we're really developing our mind in our psyche, yeah. our emotions. That's where we also need to develop. Yeah. You know, as uh, one last thought, uh, because Celebrating Act Two really is dedicated to people over 50. Um, our core audience is everybody in their senior years, anywhere from 50 to 90 or beyond. Um, and as I get older, I notice that, of course, every at every age, you're a little bit different. You th Theoretically, <laughs> you gain some wisdom, <laughs> and that's not necessarily true, but I like to think that in my old age, I've gained some wisdom, and, and this book really rings true uh, for me as well as for my grandsons, so um, I, I recommend it heartily. We'll see you soon. Keep in touch, and we'll let everybody know on Celebrating Act Two uh, when we're going to do these eight videos. This would be a wonderful series. Thank you. Thank you both so very much. Really, really um, uh, deeply appreciate uh, the work you're doing. Thank you, Leonard. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.